Thanks for joining us for this symposium. I'm Bill Rapisi, President and CEO of the Lymphatic Education Research Network. Lauren's mission is to fight lymphatic diseases through education, research, and advocacy. In order to win a fight, you first have to join it. So we ask, please become a supporting member of LEARN at lymphaticnetwork.org. And we hope you enjoy today's symposium. Welcome to Managing Lymphedema Through Lymphatic Yoga with me. My name is Babs. So I just wanna start off by thanking all of our sponsors. These sponsors are the reason that we're able to host these events. And um, so just thank you to all of these wonderful communities here listed in this slide. This is an important disclaimer that you can read to yourself, um, but basically that I'll have my own little disclaimer that I'll talk about, but just know that this is here for educational purposes and not to provide any individual medical advice and that your healthcare providers are really the ones that you go to first. So hello and welcome. So my own disclaimer that I want to share for this presentation is really just to listen to your body. So something I always tell my patients and I say in my programs is to listen to the whispers. So listen to those subtle messages that you hear, that inner voice in your mind that says, okay, this is all right, or this is feeling good, or maybe this is feeling bad. So listen to those soft whispers so that you don't have to hear the screams. So listen, use this time to kind of build that relationship between your mind and your body. And if some pose doesn't feel good, just calm your body down, just sit there and breathe. And really throughout our yoga practice at the end of this presentation, you can sit there, listen, be in our energy together and just breathe and you don't have to do anything. Um, I tell my participants all the time, you can come and just be in the energy and that's enough for me and, that, and that's enough for you too. So no expectations or no worries, just enjoy this time together. So about me, I am an occupational therapist, lymphedema therapist, and yoga teacher, and I currently live in Boston with my fiance, Danny. We live in the North End here in a tiny shoebox apartment, so what you're seeing here is pretty much one-third of our apartment, but um, it, it works. It's good. And I work at Brigham and Women's Faulkner Hospital, which is in Jamaica Plain, and I'm a lymphedema therapist there, and I really love it at Faulkner. I've been there for three years and it's a wonderful community. So that's a little bit about me currently. And so I want to just get to know you briefly. So I would love to hear in the chat, you already told me where you're from. So I would love to hear if you are coming here because you have lymphedema, if you have lipedema, maybe you have lipo lymphedema, or you are a loved one of someone who has lymphedema or maybe you're a lymphedema therapist. So I would love to know kind of why you're here. Okay, so a mix that we can see. Wonderful. So good. So this will really be for all of you here. So if you're a therapist learning, if you have lymphedema, if you have lipedema, there will be something here for you to take away and, and to help you. Awesome. So I see a lot of I saw an OT, cool, wonderful. This is going too fast for me to read, I'll say that. Okay, but I'm so happy you're all here and that we are together. So a important quote that I really like is that shared, let's see, I'm gonna hide my thing here. Shared experience is a necessary ingredient in empathy. So this is a quote from the book, The Unseen Body, which maybe many of you have read before. It's a wonderful book by Jonathan Reisman. And I, I love this quote because it's really important as therapists, as individuals who are caring for someone with lymphedema, lipedema, and for just the whole community itself, is that if we can share, if we can share our energy, if we can share what we did that helped what we did that didn't help the more knowledge that we spread to one another the more we can lift each other up and really have empathy and true um, care and kindness for each other so I want to start off by 
sharing a little bit about my mom and she's here watching this too. So her name is Tina. She's a breast cancer survivor and was unfortunately diagnosed with upper extremity lymphedema. And that's why I became a lymphedema therapist because one, I love her so much. <laughs> and two, I just saw her struggling. And as many of you know, when someone you love is struggling, you feel that struggle and you, you will do anything in your power to help. So that's why I absorb and learn and, and want to really become an expert of this chronic condition because my mom is affected by it. Um, and I, that choked me up a little bit, but I'll take a breath. <laughs> so to learn more about my mom's story and I, we wrote a blog together on my website. And um, this is just a little quote from that blog that we wrote together. This is a quote from her. And she said, Babs not only treated my lymphedema, but she helped me with my whole body's health. I now understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, which is so important. Today, my arm is under control and I'm managing my lymphedema through many ways. And now lymphatic flow yoga is in my weekly routine. And let me just tell you, my mom is someone who did not do yoga. She did not want to think about it. She did not want to talk about it. She kind of was against it. And then during the pandemic, we, I was in Boston, she was in Rhode Island. So there was no way other than to meet on Zoom. So she then attended my yoga programs, my yoga classes on Zoom, and then she started to realize the benefits. So um, yeah, that's just a little bit about her. But so once I became a lymphedema therapist through close training, I completed CDT, complete decongestive therapy with my mom. So I did MLD, manual lymph drainage, the compression bandaging, she wore that, we wrapped and wrapped and wrapped. And then once we got her limb to a good um, position, we then did custom garments, day and night. You can see here down at the bottom, she engages in her own manual lymph drainage. Recently, I've taught her dry brushing. She does aquatic therapy. So I just put this up here because I really want to focus on the fact that lymphedema management is multi has multi components so and lymphatic flow yoga is one of them and i think that this lymphatic yoga really helps to complement all of these other kind of standard gold standard treatments so that's how i became this is that's why i'm here <laughs> that's how this all came about so why are you here and what what are you going to learn um enough about me so today we're going to learn what is lymphatic flow yoga and understand the benefits. And then we'll talk about what does the research say about yoga and lymphedema. As an occupational therapist, we always want to practice evidence-based practices. So everything we do, we want to have evidence behind because that really guides and leads our interventions. So I have something special to share that I'm actually um, going to share in this presentation about some current research. Um, and then we're gonna actually engage in a short seated lymphatic flow yoga practice. And then, like I said earlier, we'll end with a question and answer. And that will be in the box below that says Q and A. We'll have about 10, 15 minutes to, to chat and discuss and, and continue to learn. So let's take a deep breath collectively because the more you're grounded, the more you're connected, the more that you can focus, the more that you'll observe, the more that you will take in and digest. So let's just close our eyes for a moment, relax our shoulders, take a slow breath in through the nose, and then exhale, let it go through the mouth. And I encourage you to continue this breathing as I present. So just relax, put your phone away, put work away, put the stress away and just be here. And you dedicated the time to be here. So, so allow your mind to be here. So what is lymphatic flow yoga? So this is the definition that I've created. Lymphatic flow yoga is a mindful movement practice to encourage lymphatic health through guided self manual lymph drainage, emphasis on breath work, awareness of the lymph pathways, and the use of muscle pumps to assist lymph flow to restore mind and body balance. So this is just kind of like my working definition of it. This just felt right for, for what I teach. And
And so in our practice, there's four different components that I teach. So every yoga class that I teach, every lymphatic flow class has breathing, has self manual lymph drainage. We have muscle pump activation, the asanas, the yoga poses. And then the fourth component is mindfulness. And these are also the four ways that the lymph fluid is moving. So these four components we're gonna go through now. So the first is breathing. This is critical and it's free, <laughs> pretty much always free. So I want to emphasize just how important breath work is, not only for your relaxation, not only for everyday activities, but for the lymphatic system. So basically, the more that we can ignite some of this belly diaphragmatic breath, we're able to stimulate lymph flow and activation. So I want to try it with you all. So we're going to place our hands to our abdomen or our low belly and spread the fingers wide like I'm doing here. And as you inhale through the nose, you're going to slowly breathe in, filling the belly like a balloon into the hands. And then exhale slowly through the mouth as the belly comes back in towards the spine. So nice breath in as the belly expands, this time giving a little pressure with the hands. So inhaling, kind of push, push, push against the belly and then exhale, releasing the hands off. Try that two more times. So inhale, feel the belly expand, protruding outward and then exhale, slowly allow everything to come back into center. One more time, breath in. And exhale. So this is so important to do, and this is something you can do while you're sitting waiting for your doctor's appointment, while you're sitting in the car, while you're listening to this presentation. As you're doing this, when you breathe in, the diaphragm sits down. And then as you exhale, the diaphragm comes up and in and acts as a vacuum, massaging this major thoracic duct up through the body. So it's basically massaging this duct to pull the fluid from the lower half of the body up back into the cardiovascular system, back to the central venous system. So basically, big takeaway, breathe. <laughs> and I don't know if we're ever taught to breathe. And I don't know if many of you have ever even stopped to breathe and notice your breathing, but it's so important to really use this belly breath. So sometimes when we breathe in, we'll go like this and we'll kind of use these secondary respiratory muscles here in the chest. And that causes more tightness here, causes more strain. It also closes off this area that all the food's going back to. So the biggest thing in our lymphatic flow yoga practice is to open the heart, allow breathing come really from the activation of the diaphragm to stimulate and move this lymph fluid up. Our belly, our abdominal area has the largest amount of lymph nodes around in it. So in all of these organs, we really want to pump and get this moving. So that's component one is breath. The second is self manual lymph drainage. So before our practice, we always start with breathing and self MLD. The reason for this is because we want to clear the central lymphatics. What does that mean, Babs? So it means that we want to clear the fluid that's being stagnant, that hasn't been moved in this area and also in our belly. So we wanna move the fluid here and here so that when we move and do our yoga positions and postures that that fluid from the arm, from the leg, from the low belly can flush out easier. So a way that I feel like helps to explain this is that if you imagine that your whole arm, say you have um, left upper extremity lymphedema, right? In your arm. I would like you to imagine that there's cars. So a million cars lined up all the way up, all the way to the heart, right? So there's all of these cars. These cars are the lymph fluid. So there's a pocket of fluid here, pocket of fluid here, all the way up. In order for this car down here, say you had a big, that kind of hump on the hand, in order for this swelling to remove and, and flush out, 
we have to move all of the cars up here first. So these cars move and then these cars move and then this car moves and that so on, so on, right? And then finally, this little blue buggy is what came to my mind right now. I don't know why, whatever. Whoever has a blue buggy, maybe you're coming through to me, but so that, that car has to wait for all of that, those cars to move out. So if we just started here, if we just started pumping the hands without draining centrally, then we would just cause a car crash right here. It'd just be a buildup right there. So that's the real importance of doing the drainage before the yoga. And that's what makes lymphatic flow yoga so special and different from a yoga class is because we're thinking about the body and the way that the lymphatic system works and how the fluid is actually being drained and moved through the body. So if you have congestion and um, a lot of buildup centrally, we have to work there before we can work through the legs. So there's a certain sequence that I've modified and created. So during our yoga practice, I'll go over that with you today. But basically, we drain our chest, our neck, and our shoulders, and our abdomen. So the third component is what you all know as yoga. So muscle contraction, muscle movement, um, elongation of the muscles, contraction of the muscles. So basically, the cardiovascular system has the heart that pumps the blood all day, right? We don't have to worry about it too much. It just pumps, pumps, pumps. The lymphatic system doesn't have a natural pump. We have to use our skeletal muscle activation to pump, contract, and release so that the fluid can move through the vessels. So it's really important to stay active through movement, through this muscle movement. So at rest, our lymph system moves super slow. I, I think it's about two to three to four beats per minute. So it's every 15 seconds, it's gonna pump so like boom, and you wait, then uh, we don't have time to wait, but you then you'd wait and then pump again. So it moves very, very slow. So, but we can control the speed of that movement by our movement. So the way that we can move, getting everything moving, maybe do this while you're watching me. So that's huge. So really relying on our skeletal muscles to pump. And then the fourth component, so this is, I feel is the most important of the four components. They're all important, but this one is really critical. And I love to say that in order to heal, we must feel. So what I mean by that is that we really want to change and restore and renew our mindset about this chronic progressive condition. So if we're able to kind of take a step back, listen to ourselves, understand our bodies, where is that fluid building up? Is it building up underneath the armpit? You feel like a little balloon under there? Do you feel like it's in your low belly? Do you feel like it's behind the knee or in the, in the middle of the knee? Kind of where in your body do you feel the, the stagnant fluid? And then once you kind of connect to the body, you're saying, okay, this is what's going on. Without judgment, just kind of observing, then you're better able to listen and then you're better able to respond. So I, I just had this, what time is it? Do I have time for a story? Oh gosh, one story. So I had this patient the other day and we were talking and, and she was saying that when she first got diagnosed, she was Googling lymphedema and all she saw was chronic progressive condition. Like it's worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. So in her mind, she imagined this lymphedema as a train going full speed ahead towards destruction, right? The train was moving and moving and moving and not going to stop. And so then she, so then she was like, okay, I can probably slow down this train, but I can't actually stop this train. So after a couple months of us talking and me teaching her and her listening to her body and just building this relationship between her mind and body, she said to me, she was like, Babs, I actually feel like the train is in the station. The train is not going full speed. It's in the station. And I'm able now to tell if I do this, the train might move a little bit. If I do this, the train's going to stay here. So she now felt like she was in control of her lymphedema and that 
it's not this going to towards destruction no matter what you're able to take a step back and and see where in this process that you do have control over and there's a lot that you do have control over but I think it starts first with with connecting back to yourself and and I and I strongly feel that this chronic condition really doesn't mean that you are out of control or that you lost control you can regain that control by learning by being here today like by really just taking in all the information and then just like giving yourself a break, like just being there with yourself and saying, okay, I'm okay. I'm going to figure this out. So, and, and I'll be there to help you. Um, and there's a lot of wonderful people in the lymphedema community that are, that are here for you. Um, and then also through our meditation or mindfulness, this taps into our parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest and digest. So if we're at a calm, relaxed state, then everything's able to heal and move in a much more fluid and happy way. So the benefits, there's so many, but basically it's improving your quality of life by establishing this mind and body balance, kind of like what I've been talking about this whole time. It's this conversation that needs to happen between your mind and your body. So in our lymphatic flow yoga practice, you'll build strength, mobility, and stability. Mentally, you'll build more clarity, relaxation, and then above all this wholeness. So feeling like you're not broken and you're not... Um, and a piece of you isn't missing, that you're actually whole no matter what. So the takeaways. Um, so the biggest takeaways is that breath work, self-manual lymph drainage, movement, muscle pump, and mindfulness are the four components of my lymphatic flow yoga class. And that they are also four ways to improve lymphatic health. So now we'll talk about the research. So this is a really interesting um, systematic review. It's called Managing Lymphedema, Increasing Range of Motion and Quality of Life Through Yoga Therapy Amongst Breast Cancer Survivors. And this was in the International Journal of Yoga in 2021. So they looked at a total of 208 studies and they focused on the top seven. The Participants range, they were above 18, and the mean was between 52 and 65 years old. They all had a breast cancer diagnosis, and they were either diagnosed or at risk for lymphedema. So then they looked at all different timelines of the yoga programs, eight weeks to 12 months, um, between eight and 144 yoga sessions, and then the actual practice length varied between 40 and 90 minutes. So they basically looked at all these different studies and said, okay, what did they do? And so there's also different various types of yoga. So these words right here are different types of yoga. If you're like, what is that? Um, and then four out of the studies had a home practice. So they were measuring quality of life, pain, range of motion, spinal mobility, and arm volume. And these are the various tools they used. And the results, this is a quote from the article, is it says that targeted yoga intervention programs have been proven to improve the quality of sleep, daytime functioning, fatigue-related symptoms, blood cortisol level, that's your stress level, um, your blood stress level, post-chemo-induced nausea, muscle soreness, and lowered overall physical discomfort and reduced anxiety and depression, which is amazing. So basically the takeaway is that yoga is proven to improve the quality of life for individuals with lymphedema. However, I do want to make a distinction that all of those studies studied yoga. They didn't study lymphatic flow yoga with that. <laughs> they just studied yoga, which I love yoga and I think that's wonderful. But um, I think that having the components of how to move the fluid, how to essentially drain the fluid, how to work with the pathways, work with gravity, will be an even better way to live successfully with lymphedema. And that's why I started my own study. So a handful of people know about this, and that's the 16 people who are actually in the current study right now. So it's a mixed method study that I'm currently conducting that basically I'm having the participants measure with this self-measuring tool in various positions each week for seven weeks. And we're also doing the lymphedema life impact scale. So it's a qualitative and quantitative study 
for a seven week program to determine the mental, physical, psychosocial aspects of living with lymphedema, lipedema, and lipolymphedema. So um, that'll be in the future. So stay tuned for that. And I'm also planning on doing another study like this. So if anyone out there is into research or wants to partner with me, please let me know because um, I, think it, I think it could really be awesome. And I'm so thankful for all of my participants who, who have joined. So this is my reference for that, um, the review article. And then you might've noticed all the paintings in or the artwork in my presentation right now. That's from my preschool friend, Maddie. And this is her watching me on YouTube. Um, I have a YouTube channel, Balance with Babs. So she's watching me there. So this is just a um, quick overview of lymphatic flow yoga. So the definition, the components, I teach every Monday night on Zoom. And I also have a yoga wellness program that runs a couple times of year for people with lymphedema and lipedema. And this is all my contact info at the bottom. So feel free to email me or um, message me on Facebook or visit my website, balancewithbabs.com. So you can take a screenshot or a picture of this if you'd like. But yeah, get in touch with me if you, if you need to. So let's begin our yoga. So let's get started. So I'm going to stop my screen share here. That way you can see me. Okay, so we'll begin our yoga. So a couple just little quick things. Make sure you're on a chair without wheels, unless you're in a wheelchair, that's okay. But if, if you have like an office chair that you're, you're gonna use, maybe switch it out for something sturdy, just because I don't want you wheeling away. Um, so find a, a comfortable, sturdy, may I add, chair, and then we'll begin. Okay, I'm actually gonna change this a little. Just the perfectionist in me. <laughs> okay, actually whatever. So come to a nice comfortable seat and we'll place our feet into the earth, into the ground, and then just place your hands gently into your lap. And then I'll invite you all just to close your eyes, relax your shoulders, Just check in right now who you brought to this presentation. So every day our mind and our body is going to be a little different. So just take a moment to settle into acknowledging who's here. So how is your breathing right now? Is it slow? Is it fast? Is it jagged? Is it smooth? Just find this observation, taking yourself kind of take a step back and just look at your whole being right here in this moment. And then we'll slowly begin a breathing exercise to help to ground us down and kind of release any stress or worries in our body. So as you breathe in through the nose, you're going to breathe in. And then you're gonna slowly blow out the air with your mouth. So the next time you breathe in, in your mind, I'd like you to say, I am. And then exhale, you're gonna say strong. Inhale, I am. Exhale in your mind, say loved. Inhale, I am. Exhale, here to learn. And then release your arms by your side and just shake it out a bit. So just kind of shake out that intention, kind of move your feet, kind of move the hand, just do a little shake. That just helps to kind of reset the nervous system. And then we'll begin the components of our lymphatic flow yoga. So starting with our breath. So we'll place our hands to our belly, spread the fingers wide, create a lot of surface area. And then as you take a breath in, just like we did before, you're gonna give a little pressure on the breath in as you 
slowly protrude the belly out. And then as you exhale, release the hands as the belly pulls back in towards the spine. We'll do that three more times. Inhale, give a little push, push, push. And then exhale. You can move your hands around a little bit too. So maybe going a little bit lower. Notice how that feels. Coming up a little bit higher. Notice how that feels. One more time. Good, and then continue that nice, slow belly breath throughout this whole practice. And anytime your mind starts to go towards what you're gonna have for dinner or the, the grocery list, or I don't know why food's on my mind, but whatever might be on your mind, just kind of let it come and just let it go. So just a way to let it go is just to focus back on the breathing. And even if you say in your mind, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out. And then we'll take our hands. So we're gonna begin our neck, chest, and shoulder manual lymph drainage. So what you can do is take your hands and place them onto the chest like this. So crossing the hands. If this feels really funky and uncomfortable, try the other way, or you can just do one hand at a time. That's totally fine. So find a comfortable position and then make sure you're going underneath your shirt to get skin to skin contact. That's super important for manual lymph drainage. So you want to have that skin stretching ability. So you want to have, you want to be touching your skin. So spread the hand wide, make a lot of big surface area here. You're right on this collarbone here. And you're gonna do something called the stationary circle. So you're gonna stretch the skin in towards the neck, almost making like a little half circle or a little rainbow formation coming in towards the neck. Don't beat yourself up about this. You're here trying it, it might be your first time. So let your mind be at ease that no matter what you're doing, you're stimulating this area. So no stress, no worries, just try your best here and you're just stretching the skin to light pressure, about 80% or so of our lymphatics is superficial right underneath the skin. So you just need a little light pressure to move the fluid. Good, so that's our first position. And there, this is the reason that that's the first position is that all the fluid from the distal extremities, the limbs, the abdomen, everything comes back in and gets dumped back into the heart via these ducts right here. So we want to, clear this first. Think about that car analogy. We want to clear this before we start our movement. And then we'll come to the neck. So the lymph nodes are either in clusters or in kind of chain-like formations. So we'll bring our hands to the sides of the neck. Heels can come together at the throat. And then you're going to stretch the skin back and then down, kind of aiming it back in towards the clavicles or your collarbones. So you might notice that you might need to swallow a few times here. You might feel some relaxation from opening up this throat area. This is really good if you have head and neck lymphedema to drain this constantly, to help stimulate your neck muscles. I'm currently taking classes, head and neck lymphedema course right now, so I'm all about it. <laughs> And then coming to the chest, you're gonna cross your hands at the chest. And then, so we just drained all that fluid down. So now we wanna clear here again. So we're gonna, again, find those nice circles. And this you can kind of make your own. Sometimes I take my fingers and kind of rub them along the collarbone, kind of do a little pump, pump action. Sometimes a little tap, tap, little butterfly wings. So that's getting advanced, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So just do, do what feels good, honestly, and just know that whatever you're doing, you're doing okay, you're doing fine. Mm -hmm. And then come to the shoulders, and we're gonna move the shoulders here, all these shoulder collectors here. So you're gonna stretch the skin up and down. And as you do this, pump the elbows. So this is also targeting the lymph nodes in the axilla, in the armpit. So it's a, a two for one special here. So just stretch the skin here, maybe close your eyes, kind of pulling this muscle down and in. So you can spend a little bit of time kind of stretching the skin there. 
and then we'll come back to the chest. So we just drained all this area into here. So now we want to clear this one more time. So coming back to this position, again, one hand at a time, totally fine. Whatever feels best in your anatomy right now works for me. And then come to the other side. Maybe close your eyes for a moment and then release the hands down towards the lap. Sit up nice and tall. Notice how the front body feels. Do you feel a little bit lighter? Can you maybe lift the eyebrows a little bit? See what that changes in your mind. See how your sensations, your perspective shifts. Take a slow breath in through the nose. And then exhale out. Wonderful. So that's our kind of warm up is just opening and clearing this area. And then we're going to release our arms down by our sides and we're going to make our way all the way down through the body. So we're going to start at the cervical spine at the top. So we're going to gently drop the chin down towards the chest, feeling a nice stretch in the back of the neck. And then nice and slow, making nice slow circles. So making sure not to hyperextend the neck too far back. I like to imagine that there's a little like clementine or a little small fruit at the base of my neck so that it's kind of staying there so you're not hyperextending it too far back because that would just wouldn't be good. You just don't want to do that. <laughs> so just nice and slow. You can almost imagine that maybe there's a little marker or something at the tip of your nose and you're making a nice circle. And then reverse the circle. See if you want to linger in one area for a breath to feel a nice stretch. Slow breath in and out. And then back to center. Take a breath here, take a moment, find your, find your grounding, find your center. And then we'll stretch our shoulders up towards the ears, back and down. Lifting up, back and down. For those of you in my program, I always do this one coming up next. So it, you can keep up with that shoulder or if you can kind of just lightly touch your shoulders or just hold your hand like this. And we're gonna draw our elbows forward, up, and around. So this is really helpful if you have breast lymphedema, if you have armpit or kind of this, again, that balloon-like feeling or the posterior shoulder swelling. This helps to squeeze the shoulder blades and you have lymph nodes along the spine. So this helps to squeeze and kind of ignite them. Also really good for your posture and good for heart opening. So Grab this one to your, in your, to your routine, to your daily routine. Nice. One more time. Breath in, lift. Exhale, and then release the arms down. Your next breath in, we're going to lift the arms, stretch up, look up, and then hands come down to heart center. A few more like this. So now we're putting it all together. Breathe in to lift. Exhale to slowly lower. Two more. Inhale, lift. Exhale, breath in, exhale, okay, changing it up here, pay attention, build a new neural connections in the brain, you're going to shift the hands up, and then push the walls away, so doing things differently every day, trying to find new ways of doing things is going to keep the brain healthy, it's going to continue to build these connections in the brain. It's also going to challenge you in different ways. Using both sides of the body, both hemispheres of the brain. Breathe in. Exhale, release and let it go. We're going to take our right hand across the body to our left thigh. Then left hand is going to sweep up towards the sky. And then a gentle side bend towards the right. So this is very helpful if you have any truncal edema, if you have some breast edema or lower body. So as you're doing this, you're stretching the muscles here in the side ribs, the intercostals, you're opening up the channels to allow for more fluid to drain. Take another breath here, maybe look up towards the sky and then exhale, wiggle the fingers all the way down, get in some nice pumping in the hands, good. And then other side. So we'll take left hand, cross the body to right thigh, right arm lifts up, stretch it up, drop the shoulder, and then slow bend towards left. 
breathing here, slow breath in through the nose, slow breath out through the mouth. Breathe in and exhale. One more breath and then slowly on the exhale, wiggle the fingers all the way down. Nice. And then we'll come towards the edge of our seat. This one is very helpful for any um, abdominal swelling and lower body swelling. So we're going to take our hands to our thighs and seated cat and cow for those of you who practice yoga. So inhale, you're going to rock your pelvis sword, open up the chest, lift through the chin. And then exhale, you're going to round to contract chin towards chest. And then as you do this, maybe stretch the arms to give the arms a little bit of this isometric contraction moving forward. Inhale, pull yourself forward, shine your heart forward. And then exhale, pull everything in, feel the low belly contract as you stretch the arms forward. Three more times, breathe in. It's also good for pelvic floor, getting some activation in the pelvis here, tucking under. Making sure you're breathing. So that's number one. So just slow breath in and out. Maybe for this last one, let's take a lion's breath. Let's be weird. <laughs> Inhale if through the nose, breathing in. And then exhale, stick out the tongue as you exhale. And then come back up to center. One of my personal faves. And then we're going to find some nice movement in the center of the body. So you're going to rock forward on the in breath. Exhale, rolling it around. So this is helping to compress those inguinal pelvic lymph nodes, and then you're releasing. So kind of getting that pumping here. And just like what we did of opening up through the central lymphatics, we want to open up through the hips before we do any leg movements. So nice and slow, and then reverse the circle. And I often recommend you kind of make this your own. So maybe you move the arms a little bit. I can't see you, you can only see me, so <laughs> you can be as weird as you want <laughs> at home or, or wherever you are. Good, and one more, breathe in, and then exhale, coming back to center. Let that settle for a moment. And then we're gonna draw our right knee into our chest. So I always do the right knee first, because that's gonna compress the ascending colon. So it just helps with our digestional tract. So hug the right knee in, roll the ankle around, find some movement here. If you can't quite get to the knee, I'm holding a dish towel right here so it kind of goes underneath the hamstring to hold here then you can kind of move the leg like that so there's always modifications so if I could if I could see you I, I could help but just noticing the movement of the hip just breathing maybe getting some movement in the toes and then interlace the hands behind the leg and the hamstring so now we just massage that hip we're gonna now pump some fluid. So inhale to extend the leg, flex the toes back towards the face, and then exhale, point the toes, draw the heel towards the bottom. Good, inhale, sit up nice and tall, breathe in. Exhale, once more, breathe in, you can do this. Exhale and lower, good. And then the left thigh, massaging the descending colon now. If you have any stuck, Loading or digestion, just this alone will get that peristalsis, that movement of the digestion flowing. So get ready for it. <laughs> Noticing the movement in the ankle, in the toes. And then hand behind the hamstring here for those little pumps here. So inhale, stretch through that left leg, point the toes back towards your face. And then exhale, point the toes and pull in. The foot movement helps to contract the calf muscle. And that's a really important muscle for both the venous system and the lymphatic system because it's the most distal muscle. So if we get some strength in that, we're really going to get things flowing. One more time, breathe in. And exhale, drop it down. Woo, good. Inhale, sweep everything up, stretching up. 
Exhale, lower the hands down, and then we'll end our practice with a gentle spinal twist. But instead of a full twist, we're going to do this in a little bit more modified way for those of you who might just be starting this. So hands to the thighs. We're gonna slide our right arm down one thigh, and then we're gonna twist towards the left. Inhale back to center, and then exhale, twist towards the right. So just this subtle little movement, just getting a little bit of trunk rotation, getting the head, head and neck to move. Slow breaths. Breath in and twist on the exhale. One more time. Awesome work. And then we'll come back to a resting position. So now is your time to gently find a really nice comfy position in your chair. So let your spine be supported. Let the earth kind of lift you up. And then I'll invite you to close your eyes again and place your hands into the lap. And then again, becoming that passive observer of your own body. How do you feel in this moment? Is there anywhere in your body you can release and relax? Notice if you're clenching any muscles in the face, in the jaw, in the eyebrows, in the shoulders, the hips, the knees, the legs. See if you can become still, present. Notice where in the body you feel the breath moving. And then we'll complete our practice with a mantra that's very close to my heart and I'm going to share it with you. So as you inhale in your mind, say, I try my best. And as you exhale, say, and I release the rest. Inhale in your mind, I try my best. Exhale, and I release the rest. Feel this flush through your body, breathing in and breathing out. All of the worries melting off of you, new energy, limp flow happening in your body. And then we'll slowly begin to wiggle our fingers and our toes. And then you can inhale to reach the arms up together for the last time. Thumbs come to our third eye between the eyebrows. Give your mind a little massage here. Say thank you, mind, for listening, for participating, for being here. And then bring the thumbs to your heart. Say thank you, heart, for allowing myself to open up to this practice and for healing to occur. And then we can bow to one another to share our gratitude for one another. And I just wanna say thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, everyone. Thanks everyone for coming. So I left nine minutes for questions. So um, I'll check in the box here, but just settle in. Um, the first question is, should we do yoga with our sleeve on? So I do recommend that you do because I think it's more protection for you. And also the compression sleeves are used for movement. So every time you're contracting and moving, you're pushing against that compression garment, which is helping to move and stretch the skin and pump the fluid 
better. So I do recommend wearing compression um, while you're exercising. I think exercising, I think it's just more beneficial to you unless you notice something that um, made you feel worse or, or something like that. Um, when breathing, what does the pressure on the abdomen do? Great question. So in the body, you have around 600 to 800 or so lymph nodes. Every body is different. And the majority of the lymph nodes, about two to 300, are in that abdominal region. So as you're pushing against the skin, you're igniting those lymph vessels, you're stimulating the lymph nodes to get that fluid to push and pump. And you also have major organs here. So it's kind of giving that internal massage to help everything move around. Um, can we access this video from recording? Yes, it will be ready by next week. Can we join your Monday class? Of course you can. Um, yeah, you can sign up on my website, balancewithbabs.com. Can you recommend a program to be certified in lymphatic yoga? Um, maybe if I start one, <laughs> I don't think there is one yet. Not that, I, not that I'm aware of, not, or not my type of lymphatic flow yoga, but that could be in the future. Um, same applies for lymphedema in the legs, I assume, yes, for the compression, yes. I swim every other day. Can these yoga moves be used in the water as well? Absolutely, yes. Aquatic therapy is huge for, for individuals with lymphatic disorders because as you go deeper into the water, the pressure increases and then you are, so you act as like this um, natural compressive garment on your limb. And then as you're moving against the water, that's pushing this, you're kind of going against resistance too. So yes, do these, all of these in the water. That would be great. Thanks, dad. <laughs> um, Okay, when you were demonstrating the neck area, how were the hands again? So this is the way that I've been teaching it, but I'll go through it really briefly. Um, so I start here. So this is basically, I try to get a lot of surface area. So all that fluid comes back into these ducts kind of right behind the clavicle. So really kind of palm the surface and then I stretch in and then let it kind of recoil and relax. So it's just kind of gentle, almost like, um, like that. So that's first se section. And then the second is hands on the neck. So my heels, my hands are together. Maybe I'll go this way. And then I stretch back and then kind of down and in. And lately I've been kind of like encouraging it, kind of just draining it down like that too. It just feels good in my mind. And then the third position is the shoulders. So stretching the shoulders up and then kind of in because you have a lot going on around here. And then I pump with the elbows as I'm doing that. Um, any more exercises for trunk and legs? Yes, um, I have a ton on my YouTube channel. I have over 350 videos that, um, that many have for the trunk and legs. Um, they said, will this be on YouTube later? It won't be on my YouTube channel, but it will be on, um, it will be sent to you from Learn. When doing belly breathing, do you keep your core active uh, or, or let it loose? So, so that's, that's a good question. So it's basically how I kind of teach my patients and how I really taught myself how to breathe is imagine you're smelling like a beautiful bouquet of roses or something. And you go to sniff in like this, like, so everyone kind of do that to yourself. Like you don't have to hold something up, something magic. So sniff in. So as you do that, you'll feel the belly open up, you'll feel the belly kind of expand, expand, expand. So you're not actually doing that with your core muscles, your abdominal muscles, you're doing that with your diaphragm and your lungs. So the core muscles aren't really involved. It's more of getting that, the, the diaphragm movement, the diaphragm muscle to activate. Um, someone, thanks, Sarah. Let's see, um, Kathy, when is part two? Good question. We'll have to ask and learn. Um, I had many lymph nodes removed bilaterally. Does that make a difference? Um, so doesn't make a difference with this lymphatic flow yoga because we do the whole body. And even my patients with lymphedema of one arm of, or both arms or, or the whole body, we still target and help to encourage the whole body's lymphatic health. So um, 
It makes a difference if you're doing individual manual lymph drainage. So if you had lymph nodes removed here, you don't want to push more fluid to one side or the other because both are impaired. So you'd, you'd want to recruit other large, healthier lymph node areas like your neck and your chest or down towards the inguinal. Um, there's more research now that they're saying more the closer areas of the healthier lymph nodes are the, the ones that take more of the fluid. Um, so um, that's to Michelle, message me and we can kind of chat about that. And there's also some really good diagrams that show you kind of the pathways for fluid. Um, let's see. Babs, love this. Do you have a group I can join for yoga? Yeah, so every Monday night I teach like a drop-in class and then I also host a six-week yoga wellness program. The next one is in September, so you can sign up for that on my website, balancewithbabs.com. Um, currently, I have 30 participants in my yoga wellness group right now, and so we meet once a week on Zoom. I teach yoga and education, and then I give a ton of homework um, practices, and half of those participants are in my study right now, so I'm really excited about that. Um, what is your YouTube channel? It's Balance with Babs, and Babs is with a Z. My sister is a nurse and says, smell the beautiful flowers and blow out the birthday candles for breathing. Yes, Elizabeth, I love that. That is a perfect analogy. Um, so for anyone who hasn't heard that, basically using your nose, using that belly breathing to smell in the roses and then blow out the birthday candles. Is this yoga manual lymph drainage? Yeah, <laughs> that, yes. Um, is abdominal breathing as effective when lying down? I, I think it's, I don't know about effectiveness, but I think you're able to tap into it more when you are grounded. So laying down in your bed or on your mat, then your, your back and your posterior body is supported by the earth. So that allows you to feel how much, um, you can breathe in and how much you can expand. Kind of when you're sitting here, I think a lot of times our pelvis takes over and we kind of go into a little bit of tilt. So I think starting off really getting that diaphragmatic breathing down, lying down is a good idea. Um, can scar tissue cause lymphedema? I, it, I think it can in, impede the lymph flow. Um, if there's any scar tissue or scar tissue buildup that can, um, I think lymphedema is caused by multi-factor kind of thing, but um, scar tissue can Im sometimes impede the flow, but with some scar mobilization techniques and some different padding, chip foam pads, you can loosen that up and, and encourage more um, anastomosis to other, other lymph vessel connections. Um, would the MLD be more effective in lying position versus, versus chair? Yes, yeah, so gravity is our friend, right? So when especially for the upper body. If you're lying on the couch or, and you have your arm on a pillow and you get your arm kind of above the chest and you're doing drainage like this, you're kind of working with yourself, right? So the gravity is helping to open up the vessels to move the fluid. Then you're encouraging moving the drainage and moving the fluid as well. Um, which came first, OT license or yoga certification? They came together. So I've been a yoga teacher for Actually, so yoga came first. I started teaching yoga. I became certified in college. So I've been a yoga teacher for about 10 years now, and I've been an OT for six. Um, so, but I was in school when I was, when I became yoga certified. And then two years after I then became a CLT. So I've been a certified lymphedema therapist for about um, four years, if I'm doing the math right. <laughs> Thanks, Leah. Nice to have you here. Cool. I hope that you all enjoyed this and I look forward to connecting with all of you. And I yeah, look forward to all of your healing and just know that you're not alone and there's always support and people that will can help you. So 